Hey, um, this is part two of the Reasons Essentials tutorial. Um, we kind of ran out of time on the last one. These uh, I'm restricted to 10 minutes at the moment, but um, I was running through the, the rack in, in part one, so I'll, I'll continue there. I just talked about the matrix pattern sequencer. Um, and then we came on to two splitters that are available and one's for splitting audio signal and one is for splitting control voltage. Now I'll just flip the rack round so we can have a look at the back because um, you can see more about what's going on on the back. Um, the audio merger stroke splitter allows you to bring um, two or more uh, and you can can wrap these up so that you can have um, run these in in series or parallel even um, to have as many inputs as you um, and then merge them together into one signal which is the uh, out signal here so for example if I were to let's just pinch this output here take this output from here into the right there and let's say I wanted to merge that with my left output for some reason I can then um, take that off um, somewhere else I mean this is a bit of a, a daft thing to do but if, if, if I wanted to I can take that to another ideally to another unit so let's um, let's take it to another unit say over here and I'm struggling to find somewhere to, sensible to plug it in but into this um, I thought that was a mixer there but it's a drum machine uh, bear with me a second so th those two signals come in and I know I've got a mix mixer up here somewhere here we go so I can bring it into this channel of that mixer there for example I um, hope that didn't confuse you too much but again I'll, I'll go into a lot more detail on that when we come to look at the individual devices but as far as this device is concerned we've, we've taken these two outputs from wherever they've come from and we're merging them into this single output which we then take to wherever we want to take it um, on the other hand we might want to split uh, one input so if that input was to come into into there we could then take it off to several different devices so we'll split the um, signal and take it into several different devices so that in a nutshell is the audio splitter stroke merger um, let's get rid of those to tidy things up a bit so we can see what's going on there is also a, a control voltage merger and splitter which does pretty much the same thing but with control voltages control voltages allow you to control aspects of various devices um, it doesn't actually have a control voltage um, but but it simulates the control voltage system that you might have had in, in a physical studio rack so um, for example I can take several control voltages merge them together and, and change um, the ratio in which they combine with, with these potentiometers here um, and then take my merged control voltage signal and use it to control for example here the modulation wheel of that circuit there or the uh, rotary if I flip the rack round what I'm doing there is I'm controlling the the level of this rotary dial here using a control volt uh, voltage which I plug into rotary 2 at this point here so any control voltage that I take from a synthesizer say I can bring several together into this merger control voltage merger CV merger combine them to one and then take that single control voltage to control the level on this rotary dial up here um, Moving on up the rack, uh, we can have, aside from the mixing console, which I explained at the start of part one of this tutorial, um, you can have, I'll just flip the rack round, you can have 
mixing console built into the rack, which is a more basic version, but it's it's quite handy. I use this in in combinators a lot, so that I can have several signals going on within a combinator and, and mix them together in various degrees. And then I can also send these out to auxiliary um, effects. Might be reverb, might be um, a flanger or a chorusser or a compressor, whatever. Um, and and work on individual channels. Sometimes I'll split a signal into several channels using the um, audio splitter that we talked about just before, the, the spider audio merger and splitter, uh, and then work differently on different aspects of, of those which are patched into to several um, inserts of this mixing desk, it's not really a desk, a, a, a rack mounted mixer. Um, I have a bit of equalization available to me here, treble and bass, um, not as comprehensive as the mixing console is that we looked at in, in um, part one of this tutorial, but uh, still pretty, pretty useful piece of kit. Um, another line mixer that we have here, I'll just flip round the back. I can send and return to an auxiliary and then I can bring several channels in um, play with the levels of those channels and then play with the amount that I send to the auxiliary um, so I can I can have a dry signal or, or send it out to a, a, an, an effects uh, device and move towards the wet by, by, by changing the amount of the auxiliary signal that I want to mix in to that particular channel and you know I have six channels that I can I can mix again that's quite useful in combinators where I'm bringing several signals together in in one channel which goes back to the uh, mixing desk so it's a mixer within a mixer in, in that kind of setup um, all the audio inputs and mixed channel inputs have the ability to be programmed so I can um, assign different aspects to these control knobs and these control buttons. Um, so what I'll just show you there is that I will add some, this is a mixed channel which if we go back quickly and look at the mixing console is this mix channel here. So that mix channel feeds in to go back to the rack, sorry. Um, to this mix channel here, which has insert effects and a programmer. Um, I'll just quickly put an effect in. I'll just quickly pinch that equalizer, stick it in here. And you'll notice there that the device MEQ1, so the M class equalizer one, MEQ1 here, has appeared in the device. I can select that device and then I can change the effects that Rotary One has on that. So I want Rotary One um, to, to have an effect on, on MEQ1 and I will just change that to look at the parametric gain which is parameter one and, and the gain here so when I now turn this button here you can see that this button here is changing in line with this programmer button here which is very useful because I can set up that one knob to control several aspects of various things that I want to put in here um, and then flipping around the back I can even control that using a control voltage so I can bring a control voltage into rotary one and have another device control this programming knob here which then in turn can let me just add another one rotary one I want to change the high shelf enable uh, not enable high shelf gain say um, so when I turn that knob there you can see these two knobs here, the high shelf and the parameter one gain going up and down. So it's a very versatile programming tool. And again, we'll come on to a lot more detail on that. 
Similarly, audio tracks, I can bring an audio track in from whatever, I've got several inputs there available on my interface. I can bring them in, send them to effects. So let's put a chorus flanger in there. Um, and again, I can program various aspects of that, um, the feedback say on that. So as I